in the choice of implants, there's, there's a number of materials that can be used, and they're all tried and tested and true, but any time you put foreign material in the body, there's a chance of a reaction, a foreign body reaction. There are essentially two materials that are primarily used, or the, the mainstay of implantation. One is silicone, which is a rubber, silicone rubber, and the other is a plastic, a hard plastic, which is called porous polyethylene, or polyethylene. Porous poly, it's called porous polyethylene because it actually has pores that allow blood vessels to grow into it. It's like a honeycomb. And that reduces the risk of infection, and studies have shown that that's the case. Silicone implants don't have that porosity. So there's a number of advantages of porous polyethylene that does not exist with silicone. One is it's hard, uh, which you might not think is an advantage until you think of why we're doing this. We're trying to reshape your jaw. So we're actually trying to mimic bone with the implant. So porous polyethylene has the consistency of bone. In fact, this is porous polyethylene. This, is, this material is porous polyethylene. The implants are not this color and they're more porous, but this is essentially the plastic that's used. The other advantage is with porous polyethylene, we can screw the actual implant onto the bone. So it's really like a virtual extension of your chin or your jaw. Silicone sits essentially freely in a pocket that's created. It can sometimes be sutured to the surrounding soft tissues, but it's never quite as stable as screwing a hard piece of plastic onto the bone. And that has implications in terms of activity. Again, as I mentioned with the sliding genioplasty, if you play sports, if you're active, um, it's a little more stable to have something that's literally screwed onto the jawbone than something that's sitting in virtually free in a, in a pocket. The other big advantage of porous polyethylene, which is the, the material that I use exclusively, um, is that it does not create a, what is now known, has become known ever since breast implant issues have come up, silicitis. Silicitis is the inflammation that results from the body's reaction to silicone. The uh, silicone molecule has a certain reactiveness or a certain inflammatory response that the body takes against it. And that response, when it's adjacent or right next to bone, can actually cause erosion or loss of bone. And I've certainly seen this in patients that I've taken silicone out of, where there's a resorption of the bone underlying the silicone implant. That creates an instability of the implant. It also creates problems if the implant ever has to come out. Now, that's not to say it happens with all silicone implants. Um, it's just one of the added complications that a hard plastic that's solidly fixed to the bone, uh, that's more inert, seems to have overcome. So it's one less complication in that regard to think about. The material uh, polyethylene, not porous polyethylene, but polyethylene itself has been used for surfaces of hip and uh, joint replacements, knee and hips, for, for decades and decades. So we know it's inert, we know it can stand up to the wear and tear of walking. So it's a very good material for, for facial implants where there's very little wear and tear.